Temple University football in Saskatchewan has been sidelined for this fall. Fall sports are now being canceled. All Canada West announced this morning it has officially canceled all fall sports for 2020. <laughs> We got a ton of uh, assistant coaches. We got about 15 coaches, uh, coaches here that help out, and the vast majority of these guys are are volunteers, and they just they help out. And um, you know, I, I think everybody's. Uh, they're all alumnus uh, that have been been through and played uh, played uh, with this program. The beauty of all our coaches is they almost are all of them are almost all volunteers. So the time and dedication they're putting in, they're putting in just as much as time as us with with film and the training and being out here. And lots of these coaches they have families, they have wives, they have kids, and they gotta they gotta get home to that. And the fact that they give 40 hours a week of their time for something for they're basically not getting paid for is uh, it's unbelievable. Huge for our team to have those guys. Um, if we didn't, we wouldn't be a team. You know, like you have to, you have to have those position coaches, especially. Um, they're kind of keeping us all in line, teaching us everything that they teach us. Um, they're so huge. Okay, and you'll just be going straight through, and Nathan through, and all of a sudden it's just going to be like this. The situation here with the coaching staff is outstanding. Uh, I'm enjoying the, the opportunity to work with some of the young players and uh, as uh, supporting them in their academic journey. So it's, uh, this is outstanding. Great uh, um, culture with Coach Flory and the team and the other coaches. You know, he's kind of like the grandpa of the team. He can always make you make you laugh if something's bad, you're having a bad day or something. So, there you go, there you go, there you go. He's our guy looking after us, making sure we're all uh, where we need to be, keeping, keeping tabs on us in that regard. Hey, tighten the corner, fellas. You want to plant and roll. I think that's part of the coach's responsibility to make sure that they keep the players engaged, uh, they keep the players developing, and making sure that they realize the steps that each player's got to take in order to get better. Boom, there it is, good. That's the, that's the picture right there, fellas. What he brought along, too, with his ex experience being a coach with the Bears and the time he spent in the CFL, um, he has experience and, you know, just another example of someone that loves football. And it, that when you love something, it's contagious. And the, the bonus on this thing is get your width. Okay, Josh, widen it out. He's also just a huge spirit guy, huge uh, motivation guy too. He, you know, we, he can rally the boys pretty good and, and we love playing for him. He's coming inside eight and he's coming around. Yeah, we got the A guy. Yeah. Coach Friesen, he's always got these little sayings and half the time they don't make a lot of sense, but you kind of just, you kind of just laugh because that's freezing for you. <laughs> hey, we're just getting fired up. You can hear those old... <laughs> Someone who's very excited about life, someone who's, who's done it all before and he's been to hell and back and just wants to help you get there. You know, he's seen the world and he just wants everybody to have that same opportunity. They always say, you know, the next best thing to playing is coaching. So I was pretty honored when Coach Flory asked me to be part of the staff and um, still be able to kind of give back a little bit of what this program's given to me. People just sort of see, okay, the ball's in the air, the receiver caught it, boom, touchdown or first down. But there's so much that goes into it from reading a defense um, to the footwork it takes to get open. Your working life, your professional life, there are wins in it, um, right? There's definitely times to compete, but doing it on the football field is just it's a whole different game. And I think that's what you miss the most, sort of the, the passion, the energy, and the adrenaline. I was so lucky to play Husky football. Um, you know, the program gave so much to me, and uh, you know, some of the best years of my life were was on, when I was on the field. Everybody comes from a different perspective and a different path, a different journey. We've had guys that have gone on to CFL careers and uh, been coaching high school level to um, to university, you know, to, to junior football, to coaching professionally as well. So it's just we've got a bunch of different perspectives, but uh, all grounded and all roads lead back to Husky football. So that's really important. Strike, strike, half the bag. Boom, there you go.
The transition from player to coach has been uh, smooth, I would say, just given the group of guys here. Um, you know, I, I obviously played for this team, I played for these coaches. I'm familiar with, with everybody within the organization from the equipment staff to uh, the board of directors, so there was some familiarity for myself. Coaching guys that I have played with uh, is difficult. Um, I think that was one of the first things that I addressed with the, with the quarterbacks. I don't want to seem like I'm above them because I'm not. Um, but it's, it's a weird thing to navigate, but I think we'll be okay through it. I may be a little biased. I think we got the best quarterback coach in Canada. Uh, he, was, he was the best quarterback in Canada. Uh, he's the all-time youth sports leader, and he's a guy who does it all. No, he was probably one of the best football players I've ever played with. Um, and I was able to catch his uh, record-breaking pass to break the throwing yards in CIS history or whatever. The throw, and it's caught! I honestly got in the end zone. I didn't even realize that was a record-breaking touchdown or a record-breaking throw. So I threw the ball for the end zone, and all the coaches yelling at me, "What are you doing?" But uh, yeah, I know. After it was like, "Okay, that's cool. You're a part of history, and I'm a good trivia question." So I was just happy I got to be a part of that. And he was obviously a great player, one of the greatest Rams ever. He's a great player, and he's a great coach. Some guys are great players, but they're not always the best coaches. Or Sometimes the best coaches aren't always the best players, but Noah has it all. Okay, this time let's make sure we get to seven before we pass by. It's all about leadership. It's, a, it's about helping players achieve what, uh, what's their sort of maximum potential. I, I take that into my work, uh, my workplace as well, where uh, you know, I, I get to lead people and, and hopefully help them achieve what, they, what their potential is. And I see that in football just exactly the same way. He's got a, a pretty big job uh, during the day. Uh, he's the CEO of ISC, so he brings that leadership mentality, uh, that organization, uh, and he kind of pushes us to all be better. He's taken over special teams uh, these last couple years, and last year our special teams that he was coaching was unbelievable. If they throw that fly and die to us, that means there's a guy inside, so catch it and turn up the outside. I started with University of Regina Rams in 2013. So when I came on, uh, Coach McChrystal was still here, and, you know, and, and, and uh, Bernie Schmidt was the offense coordinator. It was a great opportunity. Uh, and then since 2013, I've been here, so I think this is like year nine. The other thing I want to make sure the pass blocker is lower. He's a guy I really look up to. Uh, he coached on the Rams actually when I was a player. Um, and I had a lot of respect for him then, and now even more so as a coach. He's a very knowledgeable guy. He's given his life back to football. He's coached football for, I don't want to say too many years because I'll give away his age, but he's been coaching for quite a while. Uh, very smart guy. He's always willing to learn new things. He's not uh, an experienced coach who's kind of stuck in his ways. He's always looking to push the envelope on what we can do offensively, uh, how he trains his running backs, and how he builds skills. So he's He's a, he's a great coach, great friend, and a great mentor of mine. So I'm just happy to have him on staff, and I hope he stays as long as I'm here. You good? I don't know. He's a fishing guy. I'm a fishing guy. We've always kind of talked fishing, and he's fun to joke around with. Um, and he's also a great, knowledgeable, knowledgeable coach in the game. And uh, he's coached me ever since I was 15, 14, 15. And I can honestly say I wouldn't be the running back end today without that guy. And uh, I thank him a lot for what he's done turn for this up, team and up, myself. Turn it up for five, full speed up for five. Uh, it's been a, you know, a tremendous thrill for me uh, just to be a part of the team and the history of the team and, and just everything about it. It's, it's, been a, it's been a great honor and uh, I just look forward to keep doing it. Six guys up, six guys up, let's go. Yeah. Partner Daniel partner 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 Um I've got to be honest, I think the accent and an English coach coming over possibly opened some doors a little bit easier. Uh, I was able to, you know, latch on to a really good um, coaching staff where I'm learning a lot but also a great environment for me to continue to develop um, and it's something I'm really passionate about and excited to continue. In the UK obviously soccer is king but um, American football is growing with popularity. Um, I played at university, there's over 80 teams in the university league and uh, really enjoyed it. 
I was able to represent my country and, you know, play in Europe. I think the thing that has to be understood is the, the base level. So there it's a, it's a purely amateur sport and you're basically teaching people how to throw a ball, how to catch, how to block, how to play the game safely. Everyone who was participating uh, on the coaching staff also had uh, full-time jobs as well so being able to balance what's effectively a hobby but a time-consuming one is uh, kind of difficult but um, it means that you're doing something that you care about and are passionate about. I wanted to sort of see how my skill set would stack up. I um, did some cold calling and visited some uh, universities in the US and was able to see that while it was a level above, it wasn't quite the gigantic leap it might have been. But um, I was able to visit uh, Alabama twice, uh, Oklahoma State twice, Virginia, Tulane, SMU, uh, the Arizona Cardinals and the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's the one thing with the coaching community that I think might be misunderstood is the openness of it. Coaches want to help other coaches succeed. Everyone thinks that it's a, it's a black box that you wouldn't be able to, to penetrate, but that's the complete opposite is what I've found. Set, go! Good, 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 good. Okay, we're turning the other way. Okay, so we're leveraging the other way. We've still got four, we've still got four to that alley. Okay. I can't speak highly enough about this coaching staff. Coach Nell is, you know, at some point is going to be a Hall of Fame coach and Coach Tracy, just the level of experience that we have on this staff, teaching me basically how to transition from what was a passionate hobby to an occupation in terms of coaching. They used to call me Big Curve, is yeah. the, what, what some of them call me, and the other ones call me First Round Curve. First Round Curve, <laughs> yeah, there you go, I like that. Yeah. Fair enough, right? If he slants on you, you gotta just block him until somebody Take over. takes over. Right. right. So you guys both had a man block there, and then me. I took 13 classes in, in one year. It was tough while playing football. I graduated, finished. I played in the East-West Shrine game, took the shot down south. And then I ended up coming, coming back home, playing in the CFL and playing for six years. Blake Nell, he was my coach from 2008 to 2012 at Calgary. And then since he moved over to Vancouver, and then when I hung it up in, in 2018, he sort of always been hinting to me to come, come over and coach. Here, here, out. Ready, set, hut, hut, right, right. There, good job, good job. It's just um, managing your time. Like, like of course, it's always easy to just uh, say you don't have enough time, but uh, just having your schedule set that you can, you know, put set, together three, hut, four hours hut. on a Tuesday evening to good come job. coach. Okay, up there. Showing them some new techniques, some new concepts, and seeing them put into practice and like get it just like that, it's amazing to watch. Go, 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 go. Oh, I have a lot to give back now. Like I have all this football wealth of knowledge in my brain. So I just feel like it's just time to give it back to somebody. And it's fun. Like it's fun to see them grow and see them um, soak in my knowledge. And yeah, that's how I feel about First that. On three, one, two, three, burst. No steps. On no steps, we want to step vertical, right? We want to replace our hand. So if our hand's down, we want to replace our hand on a vertical step, then the inside hand. All right? So a vertical step. Don't step out. I'm more laid back, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm trying to, I'm learning as, as well as the kids is learning, right? I'm trying to be a better coach. I'm trying to be a better mentor, right? And uh, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? learning from guys like Wayne Harris, right? You, you know what I'm saying, guys like Matt. 
and, and those guys are teaching me some of the things that I didn't know, right? And and that's why we're here. We're here to learn from from everybody. I'm even learning from some of the kids, right? Not what not to do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Just tight swim. Yeah, yeah. Just just over his arm, over his bicep. I've won, you know what I'm saying, a national championship in college and then won Grey Cup in, in Calgary. And um, when you win and when you're the best in, in your league, and it's all exciting. It, you know I mean, I try not to compare them because I was happy last year and I was happy in 92 and I was happy in 91. So uh, it's, it's, it's the same to me. Oh, you're stepping out, son. Look where your hand's at. See your hand? Put your hand down. When you out here every day, we, I got a saying, you get better every day, every minute, and every time you touch the field. And, uh, and when we're out here, we're working our techniques, we're working, you know what I'm saying, some things that we've seen last year in the game, and we're working, you know what I'm saying, stuff that we ne know we need to work on, especially with the younger guys, right? They, they hadn't seen some of the stuff. So we're here, you know what I'm saying, just preparing them for when we do play. So if we do play or when we play, We'll be prepared. Tighter the the tighter your foot is to his foot, okay, the easier it is for you to get a lift. Yeah. Now you'll be off the edge, so you're going to have more space. The evolution of the athlete, um, you know, in today's U sport versus, you know, in the '80s when I was playing. I mean, it's you know, it's it's night and day. And I mean, you know, we were an elite program then, but I mean, just the quality of the athlete just continues to get better and better, you know, at this level. You know, that'll work. If, if you can get hip to hip. Yeah. Take advantage of, of your opportunities and just try to get better every day, you know, and that doesn't have to be in a big way, but, you know, even when you're hurt, we always say, hey, you, there's always something that you can do to get better, whether it's mentally, physically, um, you know, even helping the team, you know, where you can, you, know, you can share something that, uh, you know, that you have that, you know, somebody that's coming up can, could benefit from so we just you know always try to improve. Step here, then there. Step vertical. See certain you know body types, certain traits, certain things that you know maybe that work for me that would work for uh, you know certain guys. So uh, you know that comes into play as you uh, you know the more experience you have, you can kind of see those things and say, hey, you know this this guy's got some things that you know might really you know that I did or. You know, uh, other players that I've coached with similar body types that they can, you know, they can work with. So you definitely sort of see those things as you evolve as a coach. I think a little bit quicker, you know, especially coaching one position for all this time. You know, I, I guess maybe giving back. You know, the, the coaches that that you know the path I walked that. You know, I, I think you know you get some distance from it, and you really sort of see the benefit that that had, and uh, you know how that sort of shaped some of my views. And you know, I think about all the guys that, that I've coached that sort of laid the foundation for you know the guys that you know that delivered last year for us. You know, and I sort of you know I even reached out to a few guys that I coached and said, hey, you know, you, you were a, you had a piece of this, and you know, even though you don't get the ring, I think a way to stay young too. I mean, when you connect with uh, these young guys, it you know just kind of kind of keeps you young and keeps you keeps you rolling. So you know, as an old <laughs> as an old timer now, you know I appreciate that, and uh, you know I, I do think that you know brings some zest you know to my step you know in, in the season as much as like you said it is a it is a big commitment. But I was fortunate I was able to coach, you know, from, uh, you know, at the university level for a while and then the kids from the age of eight right up to, again, to university again. And being able to coach kids at different levels of, of uh, growth and development and also and see how they progress, uh, you can just see that there's, there's always something that you can help someone with and help them get better. So one of these two guys is going to run right up the hash mark, 15 yard. Just wait, I'll tell you, I'll point which one's going to go. Uh, when I was here in the early 90s, I, uh, you know, I was, I was, you know, just uh, recently finished as a player, and so you have, you have some benefits in that you're, you can really empathize with, with the players are feeling, which is a good and a bad thing as a coach. Um, but I think that 
you know, with maturity comes a lot of things and experience as well. I've picked up things from other coaches, whether it's on our staff or going to other, you know, seeing other coaches uh, coach at, uh, you know, with the Eskimos or I've gone to different clinics and so on. Uh, but then we have guest coaches here too. And I you know, pick and borrow and steal from other coaches and ideas. And, and uh, that's uh, just a way to develop year after year. And I learn a lot from the players too. Okay, this guy will take care of any cutback. Okay, so you're just 100% right at him. Okay. You know, I can think of a number of athletes that were, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old that are, you know, one day they're picking grass off the side, of, you know, that's what they're, what's keeping them busy. And, uh, you know, you work with them for a year and they enjoy it and stuff like that. And then they're catching a ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Okay, one other, one other quick point for the force guy. Just come back, same group, just to show it. My family's a sporting family and my wife has been extremely, you know, extremely uh, open and uh, uh, receptive to me coaching because it's been part of my life all my life. And she knew that going in, so uh, she's still with me 30 years later, so that's a good thing. You don't need to break down. You're going right through his outside shoulder. Right there, okay? Yeah, oh, I was fortunate. Both my, both my kids uh, played here at the U of A, and uh, I coached uh, for one year when my older son was here, and then a couple years when my younger son was here. And uh, it was a great experience. Ready, bolt. One, 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 one. Okay, good work. Get a break, get a break, get a break. Uh, it's something that keeps me busy, and I think the fact that it, it energizes me as much as it does uh, in coming. I can be dead tired um, coming here for practice, and uh, I noticed that last week when we started practice again, and I come away, you know, I just come away with more energy and more excited. Yeah. Okay, hey guys, so we're gonna we're what you were doing there is gonna be this gonna be a little bit similar. You guys are working on point. I really can't see myself not coaching, whether it's here or you know, I can also see myself coaching. Uh, at the high school level in the Edmonton area as well. I think that, you know, I just, uh, I love it so much that I'd love to, uh, to continue. Ready, bolt! Okay. Coaches play a big role in, in young men's lives, and I think the reverse is also true. Like, I get as much from the kids as I hope that I give to them. Let's go! Because it'd be perfect. Uh, <laughs> none of us can function with volunteer coaches. Uh, essentially, none of us. I guess I shouldn't say there's a couple of schools that are doing pretty well with giant staffs, but uh, but for the most part, that's where we're at. And the volunteer coaches are are literally the lifeblood of your program. You couldn't operate without you. You wouldn't have a program without them. Come on, finish. Come on, finish, Jarrett. Finish. Don't quit the route. When you're with guys for up well up to 30 years because i've been here the longest but it is a family and uh, you know that's why that's why i'm here because i'm not getting paid so i'm here just uh, as long as i have the, the love and the, the drive to make the kids better get that foot in the ground come back oh richard banovich he bleeds buys and blood he bleeds football blood he's a such a true football person he cares about the kids so much. He's, he, he's just, above everything else, he's just such a great person. He's an outstanding coach. He's put a ton of people into the CFL draft and into the league, uh, produced over 30 years, uh, an array of all-stars and, and quality players and quality kids. He's a good family friend, actually. My uncle is really good friends with him. They go way back, so anytime, uh, I'm around the family, my uncles, they're always asking me about Coach U. Coach U's always telling me about my uncles, so, I mean, it's a good relationship. Okay. Now, probably, it's not going to be straight up. It's going to be... An amazing person to me. He's someone that, really, that I could really connect with, somebody that believed in me, so we have, like, a really good relationship. Right. Same. Same with you, Chef. When I have my speech with the kids, I always, the last thing I say is, the important thing out there is to have fun, so, you know, it's tougher this year because there's no games, because games are fun. But if we try and, you know, just approach it with a positive attitude and, and some reinforcement and, and, and get the kids rewarded, you know, just by making good plays, um, you know, that's, that's what it's for, so. You get the snap and then calmly you find the laces. You secure the football, that's step one. First and foremost is my passion. So um, it's easy to find time to do the things you really want to do. Um, there's 24 hours in the day. I 
try to use as many of them as productively as possible. Um, and uh, it's just great to be around um, young athletes and, and other adults that want to uh, achieve interesting and great things. And uh, so it's invigorating in that way. It's a timing thing. Get the ball, punch, then you're one, two, three. Uh, Von Mitchell, he's one of the best football coaches, point blank, in, in the country of Canada. He just is. He's one of those guys. Every program has one or two of those guys. He's one of those guys. How's the timing on that? He was a little slow. He was a little slow. He doesn't go a day without, without working on football, without trying to improve a playbook or, or improve his player's mental game. Um, or set the culture or whatever he's doing, he's thinking about football and making our team better and he has that relentless work ethic. Go! 180! 180, Yes, sir. You're Coach Schrott. Yeah. You're not Coach Schrott that just played two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. It was a very, very quick adjustment. Um, you know, playing in you know, June and then now coaching to, to September uh, last year. Um, it was quick, but I still felt like I was a part of the team and I still felt like I had value to bring to the team. And so I wanted to, uh, you know, find whatever role that I can to, to make those contributions. And, you know, and I'm thankful that they brought me on as a coach to, to, to continue to help the team. So run, run, run. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I like that inside. That inside. Oh, Dylan, I find him to be a great mentor, especially to the younger players. Um, he was just in their locker room, you know, two years ago. He has a different kind of insight and a different kind of feel for it. And, uh, and he's got coach written all over him. Uh, if he continues down this path, uh, he'll be a career coach. Most of the guys that I played with have now graduated, but you know there are some that yeah, you know that I did play with. But we're, we're all we're all professionals out here to an extent, and we all share a common goal. All the way through, hips to the ground, set, hip. Good. It's a lot of hours, a lot of time, but it's a lot of fun, and you know we do things at our house where we all, we'll have uh, guys over for barbecue or something like that, and she's completely supportive of those sort of things. So yeah. it's really good. She understands the time and dedication that it takes oh, yeah. to be a football coach. I'm mic'd up. This is all on. Uh... Oh, man. <laughs> she really helps out with that a lot and supports me in it every step of the way, which makes it a lot easier, because if she wasn't, I, I don't think I'd be here. <laughs> Make sure when you throw your hips and you extend that you don't go up onto your toes, okay? Keep your, keep your insteps in the ground. I know it's natural because you've got so much coming forward. Don't propel yourself up this high. Right? Brian Carhut is, is fast becoming one of my right-hand guys. He's, uh, uh, he is a, a rising star in coaching, I think, in, in youth sport. He truly is. He's, uh, he was a team captain here when we won the Vanier Cup. I was an offensive lineman. Uh, he, lives, he lives football. He's, he's a football fanatic, I would say. I think that would be a fair assessment. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local, email us at max.local at sastel.com.